right, Dennis, thanks so much for being here and going over your data. You got a, did, a, I think, a total of five sessions for our Hellfire Council of Nine project. You're very prolific. And of course, we're going to have you share your screen and go over your session data. Before we do, I'd love to get some background about you, uh, whatever you'd like to cover, but uh, definitely specific uh, as it relates to remote viewing and uh, anything else in terms of your background. Sure. Great. Thanks, Darby. Um, my journey has been a, a very interesting one. I've been interested in remote viewing since I was about 17, eight years, 17, 18 years old when I first wow. read Courtney Brown's book, Cosmic mm -hmm. Voyage. And I said, I want to do that. And um, it took me a long time to, I think, just with the synchronicities of life to connect to where I am. But uh, as a result of reading that book, I actually, I ended up joining the military and uh, spent some time in military intelligence as a counterintelligence agent and an intelligence analyst. Um, I had one deployment over my belt, came home, did the law enforcement thing as a cop for a while, and then realized this is the impact I want to have on the world. So I became a teacher and uh, I've taught in high needs schools uh, as a special education teacher. I now find myself at a, a Waldorf charter school where I'm the assistant dean of students. So that's been my professional background. Um, you know, I moonlight as an author and a podcast host where I've been taking my deep dives and my learning and really trying to understand uh, all of these experiences that I've had and the experiences of others and just have conversations with people to try to explore the nature of our reality has been a big, uh, big pondering of mine as it and as it ties into um, my big themes have been the impact of artificial intelligence on human consciousness and the UFO presence among us as well. And uh, they all kind of converge at the same point. Um, as for remote viewing, I, I got a call in the night from uh, a mysterious voice with the crypto viewing team a few years back, thanks to my connections with Edward Reardon. He was a guest on my podcast and got pulled into crypto as the host and interviewer. Um, and through that process is where I connected with Daz Smith and uh, he offered to train me. And the rest is history. I'm still learning. I'm still very much a student. Um, you know, I, you can watch me make my mistakes on uh, YouTube. I put them up there as a learning opportunity uh, to share with people out there. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been, uh, you know, that that but that journey, the introspection you get from remote viewing, um, has just been incredible for me. So I'm happy to be working with you, Darby. I've enjoyed the projects we've done together, and and this is a really neat project. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting into the data. Yeah, I did a project. Uh, you tasked a project not too long ago on some of that. Uh, uh, well, I guess it was on the the Roswell crash mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, the effect of what was recovered uh, on uh, humanity. I'm not sure if that was the exact tasking, but got Roughly. into a lot yeah. of that. And uh, so, yeah, you have a, a great, really interesting background, um, both uh, professionally and then what you're doing now uh, with remote viewing and your podcast. Uh, one thing that, that uh, occurred to me, you said that you kind of got your interest in remote viewing with Courtney Brown's book. And I don't know, you probably know this because you work with Naeem more than I do with, with crypto viewing. But he, uh, that was kind of his launching point as well. He found yeah. uh, Courtney Brown's book in, I think, his middle school library. Yeah. And he picked it up and he read it. And uh, I guess that struck a nerve and eventually things circled back around. Yeah. So it's, that was it's interesting. Neat. It's, it's, it's a neat connection that, that we share um, with that journey. And I think that's the neat thing about being an author is, you know, you put these books out there not knowing what impact you're going to have on somebody who reads it. That could be 10, 20, 30, 50 years down the road. Somebody picks that up and is inspired. And that's such a neat gift to leave behind for people. And it's really, for me, it's just therapy, writing about these things that seem so intense at the time, getting it out and trying to understand it. So that's neat that we share that mm -hmm. in common. Yeah, Courtney Brown, he's been, uh, he, he's definitely probably responsible for my introduction to remote viewing as well. Maybe yeah. through Cosmic, his books, uh, mm -hmm. I definitely read both of them. And of course, Farsight, uh, you know, with uh, Dick and Daz's series of uh, Mystery yeah. Project interviews. It's, so, it's amazing. I remember watching Dick and Daz on Farsight and going, oh my gosh, that's yeah. so amazing. I would love to learn to do that one day. And I remember I downloaded Courtney's course and it just it didn't work for me. It was too regimented. It was too structured. Mm -hmm. And that's not for everybody. It just didn't work for me, you know, because mm -hmm. they were talking about the importance of like a perfectly clean space, nothing in, in your room, all white, plain colored walls. 
And like, I'm a, I'm a messy, like my desk has stuff. And I was like, there's no way I can clear my mind enough to do remote viewing. And then, so fortunately when I met with Daz, he's like, nah, dude, that's okay. I do remote viewing on the bus sometimes. So yeah, like, right? Right, that, that fits more my style. Cause I got three yeah. kids and you know, everything's always a mess. So, uh, you know, different styles of the, of the process. No, I hear you on that. I, I, I walked through that as well. And I just decided to adhere to the philosophy of take what you like and leave the rest. And I think yeah. that's what we all need to do to yeah. some degree. Yep. Absolutely. Um, my desk is not clear. <laughs> it's, it's a sign of genius. I've heard of messy <laughs> so I'm like, wow, I must be really smart some days. <laughs> well, you're, we have, I, I want to share your different, uh, URLs with people, your podcast uh, URL, and of course, uh, you know what you do with CryptoVM. We'll do that at the end. Of course, it'll be okay. in the video and podcast description as well. But let's get into this wonderful data that you shared with everybody that you uh, that you viewed for the project and sure. start going over it. Now, I have to say, I have horrible handwriting to everybody out there. Um, so uh, after this project, I've gotten the habit of things that are being presented because I typed up my notes for this one too, I believe, didn't I, Darby? Which I'm not going to share today. I'll read my handwriting today, but yes, you um, you uh, created uh, self reflections for every session. Yeah, um, but I've also gotten in the habit now of just adding typed text for my product, um, just trying to keep my work a little bit more consumable. But I've also, after I've been on this planet 42 years now. I've been actually taking my time and trying to refine my handwriting specifically for remote viewing. So it comes out a lot neater. Um, but so we'll see though, when you're in state, things get a little sloppy anyway, <laughs> but I'll take any help I can get with my handwriting. Yeah. There's my disclaimer. Uh, okay. So this was, this was my first session here. Uh, I just felt a little uh, anxiety going into it, but I, I think that was just a little performance anxiety um, coming through. So my low level data here, um, you know, through all of these sessions, I think some of the, the general themes that I got were things with um, energetics. And I had a theme that seemed like a, an influence that felt almost like an abduction that we'll go through. Um, this rolling movement of energy and these two societies uh, and kind of their influence on one another. And it was really neat seeing how these societies, um, the one I got into the structure of it. So it was, it was really neat to watch that. As I go through the data, I'm sure I'll be triggered with more memories of it. Um, so I'll go through the low level stuff kind of quick. I'm not going to go through point by point, but I'm starting to get here, this structure with a traveler. I had the moon as an AOL and I just got this sense that whatever I was looking at was really big. Um, and I felt movement. I got the word vibration and space sounds. So I had something that was external from the planet. Then I'm getting lines, geodescent. I'm wondering, I'm starting to get this here uh, with this movement and these energetics and these lines here and uh, this structure. And here I'm starting to get energy, uh, this energy system that I'm looking at. And I probed it and I have the data on that on the next page. But again, low level, um, you know, just the sounds and the feelings of it, metallic sounds, lots of energy. So if you look at A here, this top portion was concave so i think i'm getting early elements of like a toroidal shape here mm -hmm. and then b that was referring to just all of these lines were some kind of a barrier and then boom i get hit with wow this is energy and then just this this line with the blue glow around it, it was a strong energy coming off of this almost painful like it was defensive mm -hmm. and i felt that maybe it was trying to keep me out I never know if that's, you know, that's just what I wrote. I, I never know if that's part of my imagination. Hey, I'm being kept out of this, or if that's something that's really happening, especially this early in, in the session. Uh, but I felt excited by it, trying to understand it. So I looked at it from above, from that concave, and I saw this tor toroidal shape. I can never say that word. And uh, just this energetic field, geodesic dome, and the movement of energy was going up and down, was moving in both directions. Passage of energy, buzzing sounds, bubbling. It was exciting. And then I had this, uh, this like phrase in my head, this is human energy. I feel like this is connected to or related to a structure. It has an energetic component, a passageway or a doorway. And then I start getting this shape here, this radiating orb of energy here. It was glowing on a dark background. It was neon, electrified, pulsing, energized, electrified, time consuming, like a time capsule, information data storage. And I saw Da Vinci's man, and this came back in a few sessions mm -hmm. um, that overlaid on my page four sketch. So if we go back here, 
I saw this sketch again. And then I saw that it was related to this. So I, I felt that I was getting an image of human energy systems very early on to this. And it's just a rough sketch. I mean, I'm a terrible artist anyway, but just a rough sketch of it. And then I started seeing these sacred geometric shapes. And then this is where it got really weird. I saw this structure with these, I'll call them tendrils or antenna or, or just coming out of it with this background of geodesic shapes. Now, I didn't draw all of them, but the, the whole background had these, uh, these shapes behind this structure. It almost kind of looks like some kind of weird heart. I even labeled it the, the dark heart. This is dark and I don't like it was the AOL that I had. It was like a foreign body invading the space, sending its tendrils out to all of the surrounding cells. The cells look like sacred geometry upon inspection. The closer one gets, the more details we see. Now, I had an AOL of COVID because COVID is so prevalent, but this yeah. felt almost like a, a, a like a almost parasitic. And, and I, I caution myself when I make those statements because of that could easily be my conscious mind given some of the content that I explore and write about. But I declared it anyway, just to get it out there. But th this, I didn't like what I was perceiving there. So I took a break again, because I was afraid I was going to go off into AOL land. It was a short, very short break. Uh, I'm back a minute later, but I had to just disconnect. And there it is again. And now it's the same shape, but it's energized. And I see this energy going into it and all around of it as if the energy strikes it, fills it and charges it. It was hot, intense, dense, thick, slow moving with low sounds. And it, I had the sense that it was healing as an AOL. So what's the most important about this aspect? It was just an object moving through space. And I had an AOL of Oumuamua, which was that, uh, that object that came from another galaxy, mm -hmm. uh, with another solar system, excuse me, I think, and passed into our own. Mm -hmm. Rumbling sounds, hard, thick, something in the center. Uh, it feels pure, peace, and hard. Moving into S4. Again, just hard, fuzzy, rotational, round, oblong, awkward, rotational, rocky light burst so just describing this object moving through space movement of light trajectory path pattern and signal what's most interesting to me it was transient it was fixed but it was a wanderer functional and some kind of opposition i took a break and i'm back and then this is the first of a few times that i saw these objects here. Now, I think when I first saw this, I saw just rows and rows and rows of them. And I only drew a few. Oddly mm -hmm. enough, though, I drew nine of them. Yeah. Like a, like a row of cards. I mean, and that ties into the tasking, right? The task, mm -hmm. the council of nine. Uh, I had, was it scales, hard, compressed, but individual and independent. Seeing these shapes with an energetic streak above them could be life forms so this was neat this was now I, I suspect it was life forms on the ground and just looking up at this energy mm -hmm. uh, and, and i had an aol of aurora borealis an experience almost has a spiritual or religious feel and i think i get into this in another session mm -hmm. probing this experience more and i started getting apocalyptic themes doesn't mean mm -hmm. the world's going to end but apocalyptic in the sense of just major change that these people were looking at and i'll get into that data uh, moving forward. Oh, maybe I get into it here. Okay. Extinction event, arrival. The above energy is in motion as if it moves across and flashes in the distance. But I also perceived it as a rolling energy like the Borealis. What's most important to the tasker? The energy, the movement of energy, sparks, sparkling, moving. And I just, I felt, is this the direction that it took? It came over, went down, and then shot up again. Okay, and then uh, some S5, looking at the word trajectory, light, light form, movement, thought, and airways. Now, this is interesting because I was listening to some of, I haven't, I haven't read all of the raw material. I, I've been familiar with it uh, as I hear other speakers talk about it, um, but I haven't felt drawn to dive into it until this project. So I'm starting to consume those materials now. Um, but one of the things that they were talking about in the very early chapters was that, you know, they're not going to force this information on people until, but if people align their thinking and their meditations in a certain frequency, then this information will be brought to them. So I think that's what I'm touching on here is our thought process is what harmonizes with whatever frequency of data is out there to pull them in. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and then back to trajectory, movement, wave, wave-like, wave pattern, form, formulation, and then creation, which felt pretty strong here. And it was planetary, these are AOLs, but it was planetary, worldwide, and global, just this large scale thought form. And I looked at pattern, the word pattern, ominous, omniverse, which is a word I've never heard before, but um, multiplicity, changing, replicating, and originating. Movement, elusive, sacred, choroidal. Uh, I don't know if I was trying to say toroidal. I'm not sure. I didn't look up that word, if that's even a word. But it was like, this was like a creation level event here, what was happening. That's the pattern here, as if this energy has this impact and it moves on, but then it, it's a cycle. It just happens again. And I had movement of spheres into realms of existence. And here it is, reality, thought forms, base forms, baseline, existence, fundamental, existential. And, and, and Ra, they're saying, is some kind of energy. I mean, we, we don't know what this other dimensionality is. So maybe it's, it's um, some kind of program that carries this data and this information. And we can interpret that as a thought form. Maybe I'm just guessing, trying to justify that data, but... Mm -hmm. And then I had this planetary chaos theory, mechanical and digital. I, I saw what I interpreted as a planetary body. And behind it, if you remember, I guess back in the, when Jurassic Park first came out, they talked about chaos theory. You saw those that one big drawing. It's a horrible rendition of it. But um, I had a planet with an aura and then like the chaos theory behind it. And then again, I had these tendrils coming out of it as if it was somehow connected. Mm -hmm almost like a darkened earth or planetoid spherical object with vertical protrusions behind the object looms a shape that resembles the chaos theory drawing lots of geometrical shapes and patterns with this target. So that was my first session. I think again, getting ideas of uh, I say energy um, and, and these structures and maybe even a planetary impact here. Any mm -hmm. thoughts or comments on that one before I move on Darby? Well, um, part of what I do when I, when I review the sessions, of course, is I'm referencing my knowledge of the law of one material where, where the, this idea for the, the tasking came from the beginning of your session, you describe this, um, kind of an energetic barrier. I think it was almost spherical or curved and you kind of bounced off of it. And when I, uh, when I read that, I immediately thought of, the uh, in the law of one material they uh, say that the council of nine one of the things they do in addition in addition to um guiding the spiritual evolution of of earth and i'm supposing other planets in the solar system is they protect the earth so uh and the way apparently this protection uh, occurs according to the law of one material is there is some type of an a protective energetic grid that overlays the earth and mm. uh, it's supposed to basically prevent uh, uh, outside uh, forces from going into the into the earth because the earth they want to preserve the earth as a free uh, free will place to be able to make some ch choices in the, the classroom so to speak so I immediately thought of that but of course then as you uh, you go further in your session that that form that toroidal form that you drew that seemed to be have a barrier it almost goes from macro to micro where yeah. you have that man overlaid and so it, it appears to be almost like some sort of a spiritual or transformative process that this symbolic man is undergoing so maybe we're looking at a micro and macro uh process there um I think that one is related to the other, the micro and the macro. And I think we're connected to that. And it, it definitely, and this is just my opinion, but I'd say it would impact us. And I even labeled that, that last drawing as an AOL. I said, because could it be a nucleus? Um, Cause I, and I did struggle with size and scale on this. Is this something very big or is this something very small? Or am I seeing elements of both? Because it's such a vast uh, element of possibilities there. Mm -hmm. That's neat feedback. Thank you for that. And then you had that big glowing orb uh, which, again, that might be just another way of looking at whatever that toroidal uh, form was. The uh, yellow one. Yeah. But I also wondered, what do we, uh, you know, 
I was hoping or thinking that I might we might be getting some data related to Saturn because supposedly uh, the headquarters of the Council of Nine is in Saturn. So Saturn, of course, is a huge gas giant that's yeah. uh, very, you know, glows. Uh, so I thought we possibly could be related to that as well. But we don't know. Just but it's yeah. it's interesting matching the data with the uh, the quote unquote feedback we have. Of course, yeah. the feedback we have is. Uh, there's no way to verify that either because it's all channeled material. So, but it's, yeah. it's it's interesting to theorize. But if it corroborates with the channel material, you know, at, at least we can say we're we're validating what was channeled, not necessarily mm -hmm. whether that's accurate or not. But um, right. that's pretty cool. Well, here's my second session, and I had some movements, uh, and I think this is where I started. Um, I, I was afraid to front load myself. So I think I started this session without looking at that tasking. I think I just went into my session. And then I think I reached a certain point where I said, okay, now I'm going to look at the retax. I wanted to, I wanted to get myself going. One of the, one of these sessions is when I started doing that. It might be, it might be this one. And then was. I came back yeah. and reviewed what it was. And then I tried to hit those points, but I wanted to get the data before I, I looked at it and then had my imagination start running wild that was i was very I'm very afraid of that of my imagination taking over so whenever i got a retask i tried not to look at it until i'm right there in the session to minimize mm -hmm. my brain from going so you want me to look at more data uh from my object moving through space my the row of cards you want me to look more into that um shakes with the energetic streak above them so the life forms looking up at the borealis movements of energy you wanted me to explore more uh, the wave-like pattern and the creation. I think that was my stage five. Yeah, movement of spheres into realms of existence. So you want me to look more into basically the energetics here. So here we go. I was feeling good, relaxed, ready to go. Um, and before I even got started, I was feeling just rushing, moving, whirling, emotional, and excitement, like a roller coaster, starburst, or sunburst. And that was before I even got into the session. And I stopped right away. I had to take a break before I even started the session. I was I was feeling... I felt too much too early on in the yeah. session. Uh, but then I came right back to an object, low level streak, burst, shaking, vibrating movement through space and through space and time was important. This thing moves through space and time. Uh, elastic stretchy as a compound. I had an AOL of data, original focused, confused, alleged, whirly movement, motion, complex, algorithmic function, system. Uh, systemic of origin, systemic, expansive, global, intrusive. So back on that theme again of, of global here. And this almost feels, now that I'm reading the data, my analytical mind saying, this almost sounds some, like some kind of programming here. And I just got an AI that this just felt so complex. Organism, organization, organic, original, structure, structural, tiered, leveled, intrusive. And that I think ties into some of the previous drawings I had with that big heart or structure. It was organized, point of origin, original, origination. And then I had bright or bright point. And again, star and star system, funnel, focus, trajectory, a project. I felt curious. I had wanderer, optimal position and sketch and describe. And I had this sketch here, uh, the compass, needle, space, time, and again, wayfinder, which felt to me like an explorer. And the ripple or the ripple effect, impact, trajectory, movement, origin, hard, focused, concentrated, shell or shell-like, balanced, incorporated of corporeal of the body, which is something I've never gotten before, and a life form. So that's all from probing A. So if you break, if you reduce it down again, I've got something I'm identifying as a body or a life form, and then looks like energetics or waves coming out. And more on A, tones, incantations, movement through space and time. And then my B point here, I was labeling this rod or this, uh, this vertical piece right here at the top. And what I got off of that was intense vibration. I didn't like it. It was wavy but solid. Triangle or pyramid connection. It dealt with protection, security from the last session. So whatever that grid was that we just talked about, it felt like that. And then looking at C, what am I experiencing outside of this drawing here? That's what C area is. It was a whooshing sound, lots of movement and energetics, and it felt crystalline as an AOL. So I wanted to move to and describe the point of origin. It was a star, a star seed, star child, 
life. And I went to point of origin. I, I started here at present time and I went to point of origin. And as I probed this, I felt this was in the past, in existence, a realm, spheres. Was it a realm of spheres? I'm not too familiar with the realm of spheres. I know when I interviewed Edward Reardon on my podcast, after his pie session, he was talking about a realm of spheres, but I, I can't remember what that was. For some reason, it makes me think of uh, the Kabbalah and the, the tree of life system, which is comprised of different spheres. And Yeah, uh, and I, I think those are all elements of the same story. Mm -hmm. I think they're all connected. Um, speaking of which, I had concentric circles, rings, origins. There we go. Connected. Um, forming sacred geometry, moving through space and time. Wow, this is fascinating. And I had an AOL of a ship. And here is my first attempt. I had solar sail, wind, but I had these just circles in space. And I looked at it from a different angle here, movement through space and time. And I had this AOL it reminded me of a ship animation. I, I wrote here from the Gene Roddenberry production. We did a target where we looked at the inspiration for Star Trek. Where did Gene Roddenberry get his ideas? That was a fascinating session that the, uh, I, I didn't work that target. I, I interviewed and debriefed the briefers on that one. But it was looking at this higher consciousness that planted ideas into the minds of uh, Gene, into Gene Roddenberry's mind for Star Trek. So as I did the graphics for that one, um, I had this starship flying through space that I found online. And that reminded me of what I was seeing here, just this advanced ship. And that's what I was trying to draw here. Well, yeah, Gene Roddenberry, uh, it's not mentioned in the Law of One material, but uh, as part of the feedback documents I sent to you, I believe that uh, the the channeling work that was done by uh, Phyllis Schlemmer and uh, Andrika Polarich, I'm probably not seeing his, his name right, but uh, there was a, another trio of uh, individuals that uh, supposedly channeled the, the Council of Nine, and Gene Roddenberry was apparently actually uh, attended some of those channeling sessions and interacted with the nine that uh, wow. Phyllis, Phyllis Schlemmer was channeling. Uh, so it certainly ties in here in, in a couple of different ways. That's really cool. Is that a Star Trek shirt you have on now? Is that what I see? It is a Star Trek, yeah. My favorite <laughs> uh, sweatshirt happens, happens to be Star Trek. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, here I go again. I, I switched my drawing now. I put my point of origin in the past and then the target that I was working to the right hand side just so i get it a little more logical for me and i wrote target at the time of tasking and i, I had to give myself a note here I, I, I wrote we won but it should be we want to go here uh we must but I, the, the message i got right away was we must understand the present in order to access or comprehend the past it's complicated a complex set of movements and organization and i think that's important and uh you know i'll, I'll think of that for a while understanding the present in order to access or comprehend the past. Who are we? Where are we? What are we? Um, I think, and, and maybe that also relates to, we need to understand where and when we are in order to understand where we want to go. Uh, and then I had the AOL of mitosis, which I believe is a form of cellular division. And then I had, here's where I'm starting to get these pods here, warm, smooth, cool spe uh, sphere. And this is where they swung back and forth. And I had suspended animation. It reminded me of a foosball table. But I remember seeing this, and it was like looking at these pods in some kind of larger structure. So Naeem has a drawing that is a very, very similar to that. And uh, I believe he describes the pods as possibly uh, bodies that are being manufactured, sort of like empty, <sighs> empty vessels. Uh, when you get a chance, check out one of his... Uh, I think it's in his second session, but uh, he, he called that out during our interview about yeah. how similar that drawing was with the yours. And it, it, indeed it is. It's almost a dead ringer. And I think I even go into that later too with bodies or a body in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, at one point, I think I even wrote down matrix. It had like a matrix pod feel to it. That always makes me a, a little uneasy. All right. So again, organs, organelles, mitochondria, this is all the stuff you know, making up a body. These are all things that are in your cells. Organelles exist in the cell. Mitochondria exists in the cell. It's your powerhouse. 
um, Habsburg principle. I looked it up. I forget what that is. It's something from history. I don't think it's relevant. I looked it uh, up too, and it, it actually comes up several times in your sessions, uh, at least in this one, possibly yeah. another one. And I looked it up, and uh, basically what it means is it's a uh, it, there's a historic family called the Habsburgs who I believe are some kind of royalty, but I think it has something to do with basically securing your territory, possibly ever expansion of your territory, holding on to it. You, you're wanting to expand and uh, almost conquer, if I remember yeah. when I was reading it. But it, it definitely, uh, it, it, when I read about the Habsburg principle, I didn't walk away thinking, oh, what a great group of people that's the way i <laughs> want to live my life it was kind of a negative connotation uh, so Con that's a, conquering yeah. basically that's an aol comp i guess comparing maybe what this project is is a part of maybe wow interesting thank you for that uh just another aol service pods and origins and here we go micro and macro could be cells and dna could be a starship and then i, was, I suppose and I, again i think i maybe i was queuing in on both um and i just had to take a break my breaks are quick, but, and here, here we go. Looking right into the pod here. Um, I had, they had translucent skin, which I think is just a normal part of production uh, or of creation of life. Anyway, at one point, the the skin's pretty translucent and I probed here, I probed a, which was the head of this, this being here and then B the environment around it. So it was life development was underdeveloped travel. It was in the travel stage, implant intentional worm-like an AOL, the fetus. And uh, the A, the brain, just mushy, and B, around it was liquid or warmth, and there's my AOL of matrix pods. Okay. Uh, move to data actual from set. Now, this is where I looked at your tasking uh, right here. So I looked at the actual data from session one, page 14, and describe. So I had streak, movement, energetics, burst, or berm, a star, or sunbeam, translucent. Again, back to the energy wave. This is beautiful, love, warmth, compassion, a gift. And then the rolling energy flowing like ocean waves. Looking up at it, let me shrink my screen. We can see the whole thing. And it looked like just mountains in the background here. It felt silent and serene, night sky, structures in the distance. You know, it's weird though, as, I, as I'm reliving this and experiencing this, I, I'm picturing myself standing down looking at this and it just has that moment of, this is so beautiful. But knowing that this major change is coming from this, it's, it's terrifying at the same time, not in a panicked way, just maybe of the unknown, but it, it was just a powerful experience. I felt like I was watching it from below. Oh, here we go. That's exactly what I thought. A uh, sense of awe and wonder, but also a feeling of apocalyptic change that scares me, yet doesn't surprise me. It brings fundamental change. Was it expected? And a sense of sadness but in knowing that it's either necessary or can't be stopped. So it was just like, this is coming. I can't stop it. I'm, I'm in this now. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something peaceful here too. I, I don't know. I, it, I mean, I've watched, I've watched so many dystopian future movies too, but it was just that moment of acceptance. Like, this is it. You know, this is what's happening. And I took a break because that was pretty heavy. And uh, just two minutes and then boom, right back to it. There's that structure and there's that energy again. Mm -hmm. As if the energy is funneled from a wide area above this target or object. And then the energy was radiating outwards. It, was, it felt beautiful, but I said only because I'm at a distance. I don't think I'd want to be up close to this. Um, is it a solar storm, radiation, electrolyte, electronic, destruction, destructive energy? light therapy or radiation. So there, I'm getting this dualistic theme here as, as I get into in later sessions where it's destructive, but here I have a theory, a feeling of light therapy. So maybe there's some healing aspects to it too. So again, follow energy to its point of origin and describe. It was dark, dense, thick, agitated, stressed, confused. I had singularity, aware or awareness. And then back to that Da Vinci sketch life form articulate and it was like the energy was hitting this person and then just exploding through all these other points and this reminded me if you've ever seen the fifth element right. um at the very end when lilu played by mila jovovich the the weapon is activated and she goes like this and light just comes out of her from everywhere mm -hmm. that's kind of what this reminded me of 
but it, I remember this male figure was feeling stressed, uh, screaming, echoing. It was high pitched sounds as if he throws his head back and energy shoots out of him in all directions as a form of creation. And this is important. So there was something, this had something to do with the creative process. And I looked at the word creation, stark, juncture, ominous, nefarious, journey, journeyman, origin, importance, beginning, significance, and journey. And I get the theme of just creation isn't always this beautiful process. Sometimes it's destructive. Sometimes it's hard. It doesn't mean it's bad or good. From our perspective, it might feel bad or good, but it's just creation. Now, looking at the origins, star, starborn, energetics, energize, and again, creation. Beginning, new beginnings, start again, do over. This has been done before. And then I just got this like, oh my God, it's a cycle. It's repetitive. So this just happens and happens and happens. Okay. And I looked at this word intrusive. Let me reduce this because there's, there's, now I'm starting to get this dualistic feel to it. Mm -hmm. So we look at who the, and I lay, I remember this, I wrote down the data first, and then I felt compelled because the data felt so different to label them. So I got the data first, top and bottom. And then is, that's when I labeled what they were. So the one up top, I ended up calling it the intruder. They were, uh, let me, that's instant. Is that incidental? Intentional, intentional, it, yeah. intentional. Thank you. I can't read my own writing intentional, natural for the intruder, meaning it's just a natural thing that the intruder does gentrification, help enlightening and change. So I think they're bringing about this change. There's my Habsburgs AOL again, the intruded it's invasive. It's not natural. It's intentional. It's a process seeding seedling new life rebirth born again. So I think there's this change that goes on. Uh, just a rough interpretation. I mean, that happens just when you're on this journey, trying to, you know, in search for truth as a truth seeker, looking for knowledge. I think, I think information has a stronger impact on our consciousness and our being more so than we realize. I think something starts to change in us. Maybe that's what I'm seeing here. Born again, so that we shall live. I mean, I could take that into so many deep, dark ways. I'll defer to your commentary, Darby, if you have any any thoughts on that. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, there's so, there's so many things in your session that either correspond with other viewer sessions or that I could easily say, well, that reminds me of something in the Law of One material. For instance, uh, with a born again, so we shall live, and your uh, this some type of energetic wave or something that's coming right. towards you that seems uh, destructive and yet inevitable and possibly necessary for some type of change or a new creation. That all reminds me of the of the transition to third from third to fourth density that is in the the law of one material. The idea that we're currently living on a third density planet, but it's moving to fourth density. And there's going to be a graduation or a harvest, which the Council of Nine is is overseeing, as well as other beings. And that uh, this this process will, I think, in the law of one material, the, the Ra says it will be fetched with some inconvenience. Uh, and they're talking about you know earth changes and things yeah. that are sometimes a part of this transition. So it it might there might be some destruction and some uh, inconvenience, but it's part of the transition from this third to the fourth density uh, consciousness or awareness or dimension. Wow. And then, um, of course, the, your pods, your, your fetus-like looking mm -hmm. uh, things and pods, Naeem had very similar data. He and I talked a, a little bit about what that, what that could be and how that could play into the Council of Nine. Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Wow. I'm curious about that. It's it's so sci-fi and and to think is this is this really happening? And it's it's I think when you start studying this stuff it's like you're straddling two realities. You you have the normal sane world, you go to work every day and it's like no way that stuff's real. And then you get to be a part of things and conversations like this and projects like this and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I, you know, you're trying to balance two totally different realities. It's amazing." And, and your intruder, intrude, intruders and the intruded, you know, it kind of, and Naeem's data, there seemed to be a group of 
detached scientist like people who mm -hmm. basically were experimenting on test subjects and the, the purpose seemed to be the creation of some type of body or mm -hmm. vessel which had some purpose they were kind of on display like your pods they were all lined up and we talked about you know how uh, you know our scientists working with uh, you know their their test subjects the lab animals how the these scientists in the session data which i'm presuming they're not human i definitely yeah. uh, got data that they indicated they weren't human they might look at us as lab animals yeah. in a sense but it's all for some type of a higher purpose and uh so i wonder if that intruder intruded uh is more data related to this group or subgroup of entities that are yeah. working with us for a purpose that has in mind possibly um you know our evolution or our next stage of of existence where we're going um, yeah but may not always we may not always perceive that as being a positive thing uh, from yeah. our vantage point as the the lab animal so to speak yeah you know i i think about that a lot especially after our roswell project and, and i mean these two things these two projects could be related for all we know um with the tech piece but as as human 2.0 or whatever we are i don't want to go to human 3.0 or 4.0 because that that change feels catastrophic to who i am it's mm -hmm. scary it's unknown but I, I do always think in a lot of the future targets we've worked, that version of human, they're not going to care. They're going to be happy. They're going to be better off. They're going to be, but that's something different from us. At least that's my hope. But, you know, we're losing, I think that we're losing something as we go through this change. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. It's just me wanting to hold on to my perception of my own identity and self. It mm -hmm. scares me, that mm -hmm. change, you know. Yeah, Let's look at... Uh, I was going to put my third session here, three of five. Let's take a look here. All right, here we have it. This is this was your tasking. And again, um, I'm pretty sure I waited until I got into my session to pull, put this, to look at your retasking, your movements here. Mm -hmm. But you wanted me to explore intrusive, uh, intruded and intruders, just describing more about that. Um, the moving energy that was apocalyptic. Uh, my perspective on the moving energy being a gift. How is it a gift? How could the recipients of this gift or the energy wave utilize it to benefit themselves? We looked at origins, beginning, new beginning, start over, do over. You want me to explore that a little bit more um, about the repeating cycle. I sketched a life form on 23 described as articulate, stressed, male, and screaming. Be interested in getting more information about that life form um can you study the life form in greater depth for more information as to his inner and outer life i wonder if this is where i start getting my my abduction stuff i felt good my thoughts were racing um here we go i, I read the first start of the read I, I did read the first part of the retasking here okay so i started thinking about abduction and i was trying to clear myself and ground myself that's why i try not to read them um and then I think I stopped reading it. But here's my initial AOL. I had a ship or a craft, energetics, movement, discharge, resilient, expectorant, release, compulsory, pain, and agony. This is all just in my head. I'm trying to clear it before I start my session. Now I get into my stage one here, looking at another structure. Uh, foreign, descent, heavy, electric, humming, churning, technological, buzzing. And that, as an AOL, says alien. Structure, orbital, expanding, range, foraging, searching, finding. It felt curious and inquisitive. And then I had movement from left to right. And it's interesting, uh, some of the early raw material I was listening to, like the intro, they were talking about UFOs and their impact on the planet stuff, just to give a background, I think, to prepare people for the material. Mm -hmm. um, so I had this, this craft in the air with light or energy coming out of it and the movement it was going. Then I saw a face. When I probed here in A, I saw the close-up of a face. And I sketched it. There were nervous, eyes racing. They were tired, fatigued, exhausted, but calm, sedated, tempting, elusive, alluring, incorporating, I underlined, inclusive, joining or conjoining, framing, controlling, shaping, and guiding. Energy at the heart, calm. This calms the mind. It sedates it. 
an access point, like two energies at once, fear and calm. And I, I felt that the access point, I guess, was the heart chakra. So he was naturally experiencing fear, but there was a calming energy through his heart that was calming him down. Uh, I heard metal pinging or hollow sounds, open, expansive, warm. And I started getting these AOLs of Travis Walton. I had an AI of wow. And I saw this arm. I had this AOL of research, this technological arm that curves up and over. It was exploratory, suggestive, the power of suggestion. I can see it. Optics, the power of optics. And it just felt like this long arm that just came up and just kind of looked around. And then I was getting this layers downwards, scanning downwards. I think this is what it was seeing, exploring, exploratory, fissure, compression. I heard technology and bubbly sounds. It was uncomfortable and it was scary and it felt like an exam. And this may be this sketch here. I got to look at what A and B are, but this may be a body, a human body or a life form that what it looks like through the scanner. I, I, if I remember correctly, let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, pulse movement, tube structure, stable, secure, fastened. I see a face again, but it was different. Male, bearded, reflect, reflective glasses, calm and in control. He felt military. Green bomber jacket. Was he a general, a major, officer type? He was in control, but I didn't like him. He felt fake. He was focused, but hollow, empty, meaning spiritually. He didn't have any spirituality or remorse. He thinks highly of himself. He enjoys his own perceived self-importance. He was short-sighted. He was thin, but he was fit. I felt third eye pressure, restricted, stabilized. Again, intrusive, exploratory, endoscopic, and exoscopic. Something with scope. Uh, and then I had an AOL, Manted Abduction, Conscious Mind. I wrote that because I started getting memories, not memories, but things I've read and heard about uh, my labs, the military uh, abductions. And there's a lot of stories of mantis and, and military scientists. So I was just trying to clear that idea and get it out to get back Naeem to the data. Had, Naeem yeah. had a mantis figure uh, in his session oh. that he actually drew uh, was one of the one of the beings that uh, showed up in his data. Great. So maybe that's, maybe that's really what I was picking up on. I was afraid it was my imagination. I've never done a session where I've encountered a mantis. I don't have a ton of sessions under my belt of this nature, but um, I think I got intimidated by that data then. Uh, I moved on to your taskings here that describe the gift of the energy waveform in the previous session. I felt that this was painful. There was growth, but screaming, hurt, sorrow, Love, kind, compassion, download, like a digital download. The energy wave gift in stage four was confronting digital aspect ratio, one to one, one to two, scale, scaling, growth. This is important. Spiritual growth, pain as a substance. Movement, energy, energetics. Wow, there's a lot of energetics here. Fear, scared, remorseful. Woman crying. She was just saying, please make it stop. And I felt sad for her. Describe the cause of their emotions, stress and danger and frustration, anxiety, lust, sinfulness as in behavior, sad, intrusive. And this felt as if thoughts, invasive, pervasive, not fair, unkind, unjust, which is strange because I know what I was listening to before um, with the raw material and again, I haven't gotten through all of it, but they were talking about, we won't intentionally put these thoughts in your head. We will, it ha you have to open yourself up to it. So I don't know if there's a connection to that there or not. Well, Ra's definitely about free will. Uh, yeah. They, they privily, pretty much won't answer a question unless you ask the, ask the question specifically for yeah. what you want. Uh, yeah. Can you sure. talk about the, someone will say, can you talk about this Ra? Yes, we can. Will you talk about it? <laughs> yes, we will. Okay. That, I mean, but when I, when I think about that and I look at the, I look at what Daz just published. I interviewed Daz with his moon project and uh, Tunde had a project with that as well. I haven't gotten through all of it yet that Naeem was a part of. And they were looking at um, what Ingo encountered on the moon. And it was like this giant AI that answers, that's a learning tool. And mm -hmm that literal yes i can i just wonder for dealing with and this is my own bias here some kind of ai query machine which I, I feel like remote viewing is too if you ask the right question 
you know, you'll, you'll get an answer that just, it reminds me of if you've ever seen uh, I robot with Will Smith at the very end, he asks, uh, you know, the, the creator um, a certain question. He goes, my responses are limited. You have to ask the right question in a specific way. That's kind of what it sounds like to me. Well, Daz uh, in his data, both Daz and uh, Coral describe an object that looks a lot like the Ark of the Covenant. And in Daz data, um, the he gets data indicating that the object is actually artificial intelligence, that it's aware of people around it, that it will subtly, subtly help people that it perceives as not uh, th that it perceives as being benign in some way, not out to use it for their own, to their right. own ends. It also makes me think of in the law of one material, there's a little section where I can't remember the exact context, but they're talking about some type of uh, AI, some type of technology that answers people's prayers, answers people's questions. And the reason that the technology, technology was implemented is that humans uh, will typically ask the same thing over and over again. And they'll mm -hmm. be given instructions like, well, you need to meditate more to be able to right. understand more, but they, they don't meditate more. They'll just keep kind of staying at the same level of growth. And in the, the raw material, they said, so what they did is they installed this technology, which is available to answer these lower level questions on call so yeah. that the actual, uh, living entities can be available for the more advanced students that have more uh, advanced questions. So uh, that's definitely some type of uh, AI technology or yeah. uh, question answering technology that uh, is talked about in the law of one material briefly. When you think about Google and you start typing into Google and it brings up the most common questions that are asked and start get, starts giving you answers already, based on really it's your thought to your fingers, to your keyboard, but it's just taking that one step out. If we are able to link the mind to the AI, mm -hmm. it would automatically, I mean, that makes that that's not that far fetched of an idea right now where we look at where we're at with tech today and where they're projecting it's going. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So I looked at if this was a gift and I got turmoil and struggle, but growth uh, and, and you really can't grow without turmoil and struggle. So again, it, my opinion, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just hard. Um, aspects of reality. Now here we have cage or caged and entanglement. I want to describe the cycle from the previous session. It was a process, a procedure. It's been done before, a cycle of growth and rebirth, regeneration, rejoice, happiness. I feel jubilation. That's a word I don't use. Um, celebration arrival into one's own like this is a like this is species wide the growing of a crop but that crop is a civilization an emergence gratitude coming into one's own as a collective adjoining or conjoining becoming members of a society a new a new connection is that, what that says yes this is the gift but the price is the death of the old the birth of the new it's a very painful process, destructive but empowering, almost sadistic in nature, and in certain stages it is. That is a stage of this process, the sadists. And I felt like it's kind of where we are now. And when I say now, I mean spanning a, a pretty long time. But we, if we look throughout history and even where we're at now, you got some pretty sadistic people who do some pretty horrible things. And I've, I've thought about this a lot. Uh, as, as much like, why is there suffering in the world? And it seems terrible. It seems horrible. But we never felt challenged would we ever feel compelled to grow and i i just the sense that i got was these these sadists these sadistic things that happen they're bad from our perspective they're not good but that doesn't mean they're not necessary for this type of growth mm. it's just my side note on that but and of course a lot of that the, that paragraph there you wrote is straight out of the law of one the idea of a crop or something really for harvest i i don't think he used the word harvest but you had some type of a a crop uh, yeah uh, and a civilization joining uh something larger uh, of course the harvest is a term it's used a lot in the raw material uh the crop of course is what would be harvested uh, we would be the the crop a group of beings going through through yep. density graduating to to fourth that's and interesting and, and i I definitely had that feel. I try to stay away from 
those terms in my sessions just because of the, the last book that I wrote was all about harvesting human energy. So I always worry, am I getting into my own bias, my own imagination? Mm -hmm. uh, so I try to describe, you know, other aspects of it just because I don't want to get trapped in that. But that's, that's very curious. Thank you for sharing that. Here we go, looking at the sadists a little bit more, my stage five. Um, I'll go down first. I, I usually go down first, and then I do the top part. And then I've changed how I do this anyway since here. But technical growth, hormonal, necessary, encampment, stationary, destructive, emotional, satirical, flat, encompassing, designed, controlled, necessary, worrisome, concerning. Uh, but we can see past them to the calming phase. And that was, that came to me when I was done writing this. So it's like, okay, say this, this is bad. They're creating all this, you know, turmoil and chaos, even though it's necessary, but there, I, I guess my point was there's an end in sight. There's another phase that's a little bit more calming than the sadistic phase. So I looked at calming and I got here resting, nurturing, breathing is slower, reflecting. This is where the growth happens. So it's like that phase, you go through the hard thing and then you reflect on it. You learn to meditate and things kind of process through you. You get the information, but then it takes you a long time to understand it. Going up now, fluctuating, mixing of emotions, turmoil, confusion, sadness, rage, anger, compulsion, fusion, mixing, and then the healing, wrangling, corralling. And then fading, failing, falling, destroying, and repeating. And I just had cycles within cycles almost reminded me like some of the mayan stuff spiritual growth there is something greater divine caring and then i had an ai i felt love and pain and ebb and flow and then i tried to get a concept of these cycles here so we had the birthing stage beginning establishing growing compounding curiosity it reaches its precipice so you know this civilization they're they're growing they're coming established and they get so curious and then we come to stage two, which was your advancement stage with growth. And then stage three was your sadists. And then stage four, you had your common and healing. A lot of death to get here. Is it my own or others? Is that the cycle? My own process, pyramid of spheres. Uh, and I had die, many deaths, um, and an AOL of skulls. And I was asking here, when I was saying, is it my own or is it others? Meaning, is this a collective cycle or is this what one soul goes through on a repetitive journey? Do I go through this process of death and rebirth or is this civilization wide? Many people die over a progression of time. And I think maybe it's both. Right. Um, if I can, if I can guess there, but I almost had a, and I didn't write it, but like a reincarnation feeling like I, I die, I go through the pain, my soul absorbs or my consciousness, whatever we want to call it learns something and then processes it in the next life and moves on until it advances. Mm -hmm. Back in the stage four here, continued from page 18, the ebb and flow, like the respir, this was cool, like the respirations of the universe. I had an AOL of the Kali Yuga, which I think is a span of time in the Vedic texts, if memory serves. Um, and there's a lot more to it. I completely reduced it, but uh, contracting and restricting like a living being. It was beautiful. It was love. So I was looking at a large scale. Is this God an overlord? And then this was really cool. It was powerful, but small as well, as in it's still learning and evolving. So I'm wondering if this is Ra. Um, and this is totally me guessing here after this fact now. But what was very clear to me is whatever this powerful overlord was, from my perspective, it seems powerful but it is growing just like I am. There's something greater than it is what I took away from that process. Well, it reminds me of the concept of logos uh, that they describe in the, raw, in the law of one material. So a, a logos would be something like there's God, right? But then God uh, creates um, the universe to know itself. And uh -huh. so a galaxy would be a, an individu individuated portion of God. Mm -hmm. which would be called a logos uh, with galaxy. There's solar systems of the, in the galaxies, which would be sub logos. Yeah. The sun would be a sub sub logos and we would be a sub 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 logos. And uh, I'm wondering if what you're picking up is one of these, you know, individuated aspects of God, like a galaxy, yeah. or like a solar system that is, 
uh, has some level of God consciousness, but isn't the the whole the whole shebang, so to speak. Reminds me of uh, a few things. Tom Campbell um, talks about. He's the NASA physicist who does a lot of out of body stuff. He wrote the Theory of Everything, and in his fireside chats, he talks about individuated units of consciousness. Uh, that he explores and it reminds me of that but it also reminds me of the gnostic texts talking about the aeons um and basically you have the you know you have this you call it the source or whatever and then it breaks down into you know your higher level aeon and then it wants to understand itself and it separates but it actually creates within itself it's, so they're basically these conscious entities that exist within themselves like russian dolls just mm. universes within universes and within universes it's, it's a pretty neat concept so that that makes sense what you're saying too it ties into that i think and again i think i think we're getting the same story through just many different lenses culturally right. interpreting you know the same story uh, i have oneness unity universal connection we're all related to this universal ebb and flow, the cosmic breath or respiration, the respiratory cycle. Together, we are all part of the whole cosmic, joyous, universal life force, common language. I think that's an important piece, common language. And, you know, it's, it's not English. I think it's an intuitive language, whatever that may be. Describe the life form from page 23 in the previous session. I just got bullshit the whole story you gave me is a beautiful distraction and i see through it anger deceit lies you lied to me confused sad empowered why is this happening to me i'm wondering if that life form was just angry and he's not buying into it because i'm going through all these horrible things and you're lying to me i don't believe you hmm. or is this being or is this data telling me that everything i just told you is bullshit and it's all a lie I, I, I don't know. That's just what the data says. So that's open to interpretation. Um, but the tasking, the cueing for that was what is that life form's perception? So mm -hmm. I'm going to go with that for now. Describe the life form. Scared, angry, frozen with fear, naked, restrained, paralyzed, technologically. Uh, with the word naked here, um, that could be naked as in, in the nude, but I also have referred to naked... Um, through the Gnostic lens of meaning ignorance, not understanding your greater reality. So that could, yeah. naked could mean ignorant, or could mean naked without clothing. Um, beard, teeth, breath smells, exhaustion. And again, I had this Travis Walton idea. Yeah. So I'm looking at this abduction. I just had a person on the table, it looked like. Head was rocking left to right. I had an ale of an abduction. I was trying to clear that out. Move to one hour before this event and describe the light form. They're calm, smiling, happy, heartfelt. I like this guy. Maybe a social gathering or a party, family, he was a father figure. Heartfelt, joyous, emotional, normal, average. Doesn't recognize his own importance or role. He was content and happy, just an average guy. And then here that arm came back to me, that arm that was looking at him mm -hmm. just came back and then i got someone close is watching from behind and that was the end of that session we're getting into some kind of creepy abduction stuff any thoughts or comments on that one darby well uh you know your abduction like data at the end there it does look a lot like naeem's data of uh, an individual restrained on a table struggling not having a good time and those yeah. uh, those detached scientist like uh, non humans uh, doing experiments in the process of designing some type of vehicle a body a body vehicle. Yeah, I wonder if that's connected to that sadist stage, because it would seem very sadistic to us. The same way we would be with lab animals in our experiments, mm -hmm. and maybe that's part of that piece of growth here collectively. What what we Naeem and I talked a little bit about was if we assume this is all correlated with the Council of Nine data, we talked about, well, why would they need these bodies? Why would they need to be designing these bodies and these experiments? And one of the things we talked about is, well, if we are as a, as a human race transitioning from third to fourth density uh, and, the, and the, the law of one data, they basically say that there are people who don't graduate, who don't make the the, the cut and have to retake their density class, they can't do it on Earth. 
because mm-hmm. Earth isn't going to be conducive to third density life forms. So they're going to have to move to a different planet, presumably. And uh, if they have to move, they're probably going to need a different type of body, something that is maybe more conducive to whatever that other third density planet is like. And one of the things that the Council of Nine is supposedly responsible for or, or oversees is the movement of uh, civilizations from one planet to another, wow. whether it's some type of a transition from third to fourth like we're going through, or maybe uh, like uh, the, the race destroys their planet. Like in, mm-hmm. supposedly there was a planet called Maldek that got blown up. That race had to be relocated to different bodies to continue their inc- their incarnational journeys. Same thing with Mars. Supposedly Mars was made uninhabitable, and that civilization again had to move, in this case, to Earth to be yeah. able to continue their their class uh, their their classroom. And to do so, they required some genetic adjustments. And so maybe that's what that we're viewing here is the preparation of some new bodies for humanity's transition to to the next uh, to their next step of evolution or or retaking of the third density classroom wow that's a neat way to explain it that's really cool and i'm also thinking of uh of uh, dr jacobson's work on the hybrid program too if that's what we're seeing as well you know changing it to hold a new frequency but that's fascinating about because that would make sense with the starship data um that I had here transporting, you know, all these bodies that are prepared for, it's also the end of uh, spoiler alert. If you've ever seen the knowing with Nicolas Cage, uh, it's an older movie. I nope. did see it. I can't okay. recall. It, it's it. I'd say it'd be worth revisiting now yeah. after, after going through these sessions, it, it'd be worth watching again. It's pretty neat um, to, to watch that now, especially with the lens of like, you know, an intuitive and a remote viewer and, and looking at this stuff might be mm-hmm. cool to watch. Let me uh, bring up my fourth session. I have two more sessions to go through. Uh, Here's our tasking on page 16 in the last session. I had a joining or conjoining, becoming members of a society, a new connection, get more data regarding this society that might be interesting. Data that might be interesting could include its objectives, activities, members, worldview, et cetera. Okay. So starting off right away, before I even got into the session, Excuse me, I had a skull or a face, and I had this spinning, swirling, twisting yellow vortex. Just a spinning light, this triangle. In the stage one now, just this structure, down, slow moving, hard, sly, slick, tight blockage, like a railway is an AOL. But there was outward, there was outwards pressure. You can see my little sketch there trying to describe what I was feeling. Another, another ideogram here. Looking at an object, AOL of drop, gasp, shock is what I was feeling. Widening, moving, motion, expanding, rumbling, whistling sound, high pitch, AOL of stone. Oh, these are really big ideograms here. Uh, motion, life, moving, wide, energetics, expansive, open, cool, rumbling, daylight. I had exhaust smells, streaming, moving. And then I had life contained in that ideogram as well. Open, tight, smiling, falling, forming. And the energy felt like it went down, then up. And I had this, uh, this was an, an interesting feeling. It was like the energy went into this body, hit them down like boom. And then I just had this AI of like, this is powerful. But the energy, it's like it went into the, ba- the male life uh, lying, I, I should have said lying horizontal, so- horizontal the body was limp but the limbs limbs were extended outward as the energy surges and pours in as if it enters the chest cavity and runs through the body and limbs taking hold of a body from within and pulling it upwards as if levitating surprise shock and all so the energy came into the body and then it's almost as if it had physical properties to to grab onto the body from inside and pull it up I also wonder if that's connected to the first sessions where I was drawing mm-hmm. the um, Da Vinci guy with the energy coming out of him. Mm-hmm. But this was like physically picking up a body with energy. And your fifth element, like drawing. Yes. As well. Yeah. Same thing. Right. White light, male, long hair. Um, and I saw this face and it reminded me, remember Tales from the Crypt when we were kids, the Crypt Keeper? Mm-hmm. I kept seeing that face. I was trying to get rid of it, but just sickly, stringy hair, bony and pale. I didn't, I didn't like this guy. He was creepy looking. 
Uh, I felt distressed. I heard animal sounds as it relates to cattle. So uh, wreckage, and I just wrote the word moo. And I had this drawing here, and it felt like compartments or containers that were filled or occupied, inhabitants. A here, I think I just probed the A part. Uh, open, tin, I had a face shifting from cattle to humanoid. Is it hiding from me? Is it goat-like? Tight eyes, holding, hiding, worrying. It's the face I was... So I had this face and it kept changing as I'm looking at it, like cattle, humanoid, cattle, humanoid, it was, it was morphing. Horrible drawing, but you get the idea. And then I had this sketch here. I don't remember what this was. Like fireballs raining down through a circular structure. I felt like I was off target here. I don't know what that was. So I took a break and then right back to it. And this is cool. I had energy, pressure, physical, and life. So that's this A part here. There's two sides to this, energetics, event. One side impacts the other. This is important. So looking at B here, that's this lower side here. I had the recipient movement, wide, expansive, universe. Wow, this is so big and unexpected was my, my AI. Like an entire realm is concealed here. So I'm starting to get this two different realms or universes or worlds divided by C. And this this is really this is really cool here. Um, C was uh, whatever right print permanent hard coiled majestic internal widening expanding coiled range. What's the most important aspect? Before I get to that, I'm going to talk more about this later on in the session. This this piece here, but this this two worlds where I think what I get into is one aspect is aware and the other aspect is not. I think that's what I get into eventually. So uh, a little teaser there. The most important aspect of this retasking, an AOL of a Jesuit, streaming, streamer, blocked, and nature. And I had cattle. And this cross section was as if I'm looking at a cow's face behind bars, behind a cage. That's what I was trying to sketch here. Trapped, stuck, encamped, fear and fearful. Let me ask you, do you think uh, we're looking at a metaphorical image here? That was going to be the next words out of my mouth. This okay. feels like a metaphor here. Um, yeah, and I'm reminded of uh, in Courtney Brown's book where he was trying to remote view an abduction and they kept getting metaphors of like a rodeo of animals and then spectators in the stands watching these animals. It's kind of the feeling that I had here. Um. So now I moved on to the, to the retasking, describing the society from page 16 of the previous session. They were elegant, enhanced, remote, tiered, organized, reflexive, reflective, and structured. And I had this spinning. Uh, is it a symbol or a gateway or entryway? It's organized, structured, tiered, regimented, calm, peaceful, loving, kind, foreign, strange. Is it earth or earthbound or earth-based, I asked. A tube-like structure with tiers or levels, spinning, rotating, oscillating. Now, here's the structure itself. And it, back to that theme of movement through space and time. There was heat. And I wrote down bored or drilled, which meant, I'd say, intentionally had these holes put into it, like tubes or tunnels. Society described their worldview. They were scientific, communal, which I felt was important, enhanced burdensome, hardship. There was scholar or scholarship, chosen, encampment, uh, something fictitious I had an AOL of. And I wanted to explore communal a little bit more. So we have public, utility, commodity, sharing, enhancement, enlightenment, sharing, trading, enhanced, special species, function, functional, common, obedient. Communal almost feels to me uh, Borg-like, a hive mind type of society on some level. Uh, an AOL of slaves, AI, gasp. This, the new society is the commodity being used for something. I don't like this. So the one society was being used by the other one. Let's look at enhanced. Targeted, structured, organized, engineered, genetic, forlorn, prophecy, protected, carnivorous, dangerous, spiritual, spherical, uh, tangential, tangential, I can't even say that word, 
Uh, I, and then I just wrote, I see auras. Oh, this got creepy. I remember this now. <laughs> so I, I had these three blobs. Now I, I had them like eggs or canisters, containers and holders. Oh, I know what this reminds me of. I had the A, B and C here that I labeled. But there's more here as if these images are above or connected to something feels like a table or platform next to each one. So these things were floating next to these tables. So I'm seeing two images at once, a reptilian being, calm, peaceful, sentient, uh, centennial, I guess, meaning like hundreds of years old, wise, beliefs, bipedal, hands crossed. But the image that I had crossing it was a burning object moving downwards, like a craft, re-entry, AOL of Buddha. It's as if there were two things at once contained within that. I'm wondering, does it mean existing in two different realities in two different ways? I, I, don't, I don't know. There were different stages of evolution, as if an egg is fertilized via a needle. And then I looked at C, and it was this hard chrysalis. These feel larger compared to human life. Are they somehow connected, a connection to another life, nurturing, growing, cocooning, spinning? Like they were connected to this human life here. Connection, input, output, pouring, draining, recycling, feeding, and energetics. I feel that this cocoon or pod is getting something out of this human life. And now that I'm looking at this, I remember one of David Icke's books had the drawing of a reptilian being that would plug into the lower chakras of people. Um, and it, as I'm reviewing this data now, and that's what it feels like to me, this pod that was cocooning and taking the energy of a person or a being behind it. The word chosen, special, selected, spherical, empirical, necessary, cate categori what did I say? categorical, categorical, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. Luminary, obsidiary, wasteful, category, purpose of selection, Category, categorize, organize, genetic, genetic material, genetic code, enhancement, material, materialistic uh, access. Here we have Petri dish. That's never a good thing. Uh, as, as if the life enhances these things through experience and time or category. So I, I think we're seeing, like you were talking about Naeem's session, these scientific uh, experiments, isolating certain genes and traits and, and enhancing them. Um, you know, being chosen is sold as being as being this great thing, but I don't think being the chosen one's always a good thing here. This is, I think, chosen to be enhanced and experimented on through multiple generations, if I had to give my own personal interpretation of that data. Yeah. Any thoughts on that before I move on, Darby? Uh, you're, in this case, you're referring to uh, the reports of some uh, people who experience abductions and yeah. that it travels sometimes down the family line through generations. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is this is neat here, um, and I think is relevant to our society today. And and I was, as I was listening to some of the raw materials, I think it, it ties in a little bit. Um, I had these three categories: A, B, and C. They were movement, calm, quiet, morose, obscure, forgettable. And then I felt crown chakra energy, and sadness. And as I looked at this a little bit more, I, I again I have column A, column B, and column C as they're moving. So A, we had movement and organization of life forms into structures or patterns. Why? They felt mindless. They respond to stimulus. Less conscious, they were your drones or worker bees. Uh, so they just go through and they do their job, but they're not really conscious. They're not very spiritual. They're just doing whatever their purpose is, is to keep society running is how I felt with this. Uh, B, same silly nonsense, male voices in unison, preparing, training, soldiers, military calisthenics. So these guys were a little bit more advanced, but they carried out a little bit more militaristic type of orders. And then C is what I really liked. These were, your, these were wise. They had wisdom. They were your wanderers, your spiritual journeymen. Each one supports the other. There's a connection through society, maybe a subtle awareness. So I, my own interpretation, again, these are your low level drones, worker bees, the, you know, the workforce here of a society. These felt more like your enforcers here who keep that structure. 
Um, maybe you're more dogmatic people. And these are your truth seekers, your free thinkers, the ones who are out there looking for more and, and pondering things and asking questions and maybe disrupting society a little bit. The ones that I would suspect, and this is all my opinion here, that B would try to keep in line because these guys, I would think, would break the mold. Of course, wanderers is the term that's frequently found in the law of one material, refers to uh, an entity that uh, whose native vibration or density is typically a higher density than the third density but they come to earth in order to help raise the consciousness of the planet as a whole wow i wasn't aware of that and i did have earlier session data in like wayfarer which for me is like a, a wanderer and explorer well, i that's think you really had cool. wanderer in an earlier yeah. session as well wow that's cool what else do i need to know work wise beauty realms aesthetics pleasing and then I got codes streamed in to manifest perception of reality. It's the connection that matters. This guy doesn't look too happy getting those codes <laughs> streamed into his heart chakra, but that was my, my last glimpse of what I needed to know. I know he kind of uh, looks blissed out to me. Maybe he's yeah, high, man. Yeah. Like, Hey, this is some good stuff. Maybe, oh, maybe oh. hopefully that's what that is. You know, I, uh, I wanted to mention in Daz's sessions, one of the main themes is uh, he appears to follow a life form that gets this huge download. There's a lot of downward pouring energy from above, and it's kind of like this uh, transcendent or ascension-like experience, and he receives this information that transforms him and sets, his, sets him on a path of being a teacher and a leader and uh, it felt very biblical, and some of your data, like the your first session data, where you yeah. got this guy that's like getting the download, yeah. and that's it seems very similar to that uh, thread that runs through Daz's session. Wow, of, which felt like some kind of a historical figure. I just yeah. wanted to mention that. That's cool. Um, I had Daz work a target for me um, about a year or two ago. I haven't released it yet. Um, it's it's supporting one of my writing projects, but it had something similar to the energy coming in and changing somebody and helping them to grow and evolve. So um, really, I, I think a lot of these targets we're looking at when we're trying to get to the core of them, I, I know I've said it multiple times, I think we're, we're tapping into a very similar story of something that is ongoing that happened uh, you know, with the creation of our variation of this species and kind of where we're going with it. It's really neat. Mm -hmm. All right. One more session to go, Darby. Let's, let's get into it. All right. This one, I wasn't retasked, but I felt I had a little bit more in me that I wanted to go through to get out. Um, I felt pretty good. This was almost 10 o'clock at night, though. I was tired. But I just, I wanted to get this session done and over with. And right away, I got the idea of society. And then I jumped right into my session here. Motion, motion, cycle, cycl cyclical, repetitive, dash, churning. AOL of tyrannical. My next ideogram here, I had an AOL of a sonic boom. Life, harrow, harrowing, tight, restricting, pressured, precious, significant, valued, dignified, worthy, valiant. There's that star, starburst, starborn. And an AOL of a kamikaze again, too. Worried, worrisome, occupied. Another AOL of just a sketch here. Sound, soundboard, sound garden. Again, back to life. And also uh, structure, society, organization, regimented, segmented, compartmented, compartmentalized, tiered, leveled, hierarchy. Motion, movement, justified, repeating. Again, cyclical correspondence, escaping. I felt calm. Stage three, sketch or describe the hierarchy. Oh, this was cool. Uh, when did I do this session? Let me let me run up to the top, see the date of this. Okay, so this was after, here's where, just full disclosure here. This was shortly after I saw Matrix 4. Okay. So I, I think that's, and I say that because this sketch that I have here, Pill form, pill shaped, organized, A and B. But I, I really think that Matrix is one of those storylines that implants ideas in your mind that if you meditate on them, there's growth that happens there. There's change that happens there. Mm -hmm. So I think I was still processing some Matrix stuff here. Mm -hmm. um, both the red and blue pill in one. 
the seen and the hidden, a collective universally, but one aspect is aware, the other is not. But that comes back to that dualistic sketch I drew in the last session here, where the top and the bottom, one was aware and one wasn't. That's where I get into that here. Uh, and interconnectedness through consciousness, alert, awake, open, and mystified was the one side of it. And the other side, cold, closed, tubes, tubular, and structures. And, and if you break it down too, you also have this duality of that black egg-shaped pod with the other person. One was aware, one wasn't, AOL of rockets. So breaking it down to his basic gestalts here, you have these two aspects of something where one seems more aware than the other. Another uh, another thing that, that keeps coming up as you're, you're talking about these two sides and one being aware and one not being aware, I think of uh in the the law of one material they talk about the differences between third density which we're in now and the fourth density and third density is very much of a, a veiled cut off kind of existence where we don't always feel connected to a creator we don't feel yeah or have knowledge of uh, our past lives typically we we feel cut off and this inspires us uh often to look within, to try to find those answers, to try to make those connections. And this very veiled state of existence is important in third density because it inspires us, like I said, to move forward, to start to reach up or reach inward to make that spiritual connection. Fourth density does not have that veiling. Uh, if, if you go by what the, uh, the law of one material talks about, fourth density, the veil is lifted and uh, the connection is obvious and it's all about uh, uh, what journeying deeper and deeper into that yeah. connection um, so that might be a stretch uh, com taking uh, what your your data of the aware and unaware but certainly makes me think about that as you, as you yeah go through your data no that sounds highly relevant I, I i like that connection i don't think it's a stretch at all that's really cool um have another sketch here that I labeled as containers and, and restrictions, which could be that value we're just talking about. And I got this image of like a life restricted or restrained, an affordable barrier. It's necessary. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, for in this state, in that third density, we're not ready to know everything yet. I mean, maybe there's a reason why we don't have all that knowledge yet. Describe the overall worldview of this society. Uh, meek, materialistic, dualistic, uh, dualist, binary, survival, efficiency, movement, energetics, wayfaring, traveling, exploring, knowledgeable, knowledge-based, enumerated. This feels different than the other society that I described. So I think I'm looking at the other one now um, in this part of the session here. What's the most interesting aspect of this society as it relates to the tasking? Sinful, playful, reality, compulsory, a life organized, building, structured, organized. And I had this male adult life in the fetal position, piercing, penetrating, but organized. Reinforced, preferred, what's the most common, describe the most common life of this society. And male, sunbeam, sunflower, sun blossom, organized, resistant, relief for them. I don't know what that means, relief for them. And then I got this, um, multiple rows of life forms. No hair, skulls, barren, wasteful, strapped in, controlled, regimented, organized, machine. Wow, there's so many. I I saw this and it was just, it was like looking at it. If you've ever been on a roller coaster and see everybody strapped in at the roller coaster, it was like a sky view, but it was just rows of these life forms just sitting there. Um, really neat thing to see, but everybody looked the same. Tall, flat, squat. Again, I get this theme of organized, organizational. Religious, hierarchical, order, machines, warehousing, storage. Could this be those cloned bodies you were talking about with my name? I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what organized means because that came up quite a bit. Um, fantastic, fanatical, facial recognition, detail, wayfinders, search and rescue, destiny. I, I mean, as you said, maybe the ones that don't make it, that's their rescue. Um, Pungent, foul, relief, rotting, helpful, instrumental, and steel. And I could just be way off here too. Uh, calming, cooling, this is what's most interesting. Awareness, life support, forward, sprout, sprouting, budding, awareness. I think I'm coming in and out of contact here. Uh, anything else? Future, futuristic, encampment, 
Escape, run, flee, pry away. Winding, narrowing, paving, changing, altering. And that was it. That was my, oh wait, did I have, did I have anything else at the end of this? No, that was, that's my fifth and final session there. Excellent. What a target. Well, what a, what a, uh, a collection of data. Thanks so much for putting all the time that you did into this project. You have a bunch of great data. Thank you. A bunch of clear correspondences with some of the other viewers data, as well as additional data, which, uh, definitely is further, uh, enlightens what uh, what we know about this target and um, one of the things that I want to ask you I asked Naeem your your data is somewhat similar to Naeem's in some respects mm -hmm. um, and I, I said to Naeem now that we've reviewed your your sessions do you think this group of beings that you were were viewing do you think you'd want to hang out with them and he he definitely didn't he he walked away with sort of a negative view he wouldn't uh, he he wouldn't certainly want to be one of these test subjects that these scientists like uh, beings were experimenting on you you seem to have a little bit more of a mixture of data in your sessions mm -hmm. and i'm just wondering what your overall impression is now of our target now that that you've uh, you've had some ch another chance to go through your data i came into this session not knowing and still not knowing a lot about the raw materials and the law of one I, I have the book downloaded but I, i'm not very far into it um so my initial impressions of, the, of this just hearing other people talk about it felt very dogmatic and religious and too new agey for my liking mm -hmm. that's without reading the materials that's just other people and how they interpret it um now that i'm going through some of it because of these sessions uh, i see a lot of common threads with what I'm exploring in my own, you know, things that make sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's reassuring and validating in terms of these beings that I've experienced. Would I want to be one of the test subjects? Absolutely not. Right. Am I one of the test subjects? I don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of common threads that mirror things I've been through in my own life. Um, I don't know how that fits into this story. Maybe that's just me trying to view it through my own lens. I don't know. But I, I think I had the benefit of seeing this from a lot of different perspectives, you know, so from one perspective, these guys are terrible, you know, but from other perspectives, well, they're just, they're just going through their own spiritual growth and advancement. I mean, I had that in the session as well. So mm -hmm. um, I think evil and darkness is a matter of perspective sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think my session data, you know, kind of points to that. Um, part of it is necessary for the growth in, if you look at the larger scale of it. But the, to answer your question simply, I know I gave a complex answer because I like to go on rants. Um, you know, would I want to hang out with them in the, in the sense of, hey, come to experiments on me? No. But if I had an opportunity to ask questions where no harm was going to come to me, as terrifying as it might be, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to learn, you know. But I, I, I say that from a state of total ignorance and uh you know only if i'm ready to receive that knowledge and it's not going to traumatize me to the point of no return when i want to do that but it'll be interesting yeah mm -hmm. well you know as viewers i often think as a viewer you know the data is the data all i can do is report on what i got and you know i try not to make conclusions about any of it because it's just yeah. often a little snapshot of the mm -hmm. whole picture that we were able to uh to get through however many sessions we did but it sounds mm -hmm. like you're you're what you're saying is your data it de it's a mixture of data and it really de it's subjective it depends on from mm -hmm. what perspective you're looking at in terms of how you might view the council of nine or or the other uh beings that were in your session so yeah and, and i think that i think that people who watch this are going to take what's important to them you know sure. from that data as they go through it Take what you like and leave the, the rest. Like you said at the beginning, that's right. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Funny how that comes full circle. Yeah. Well, Dennis, where can people find more about you? You're involved in, uh, you have a podcast. Of course, mm -hmm. you're involved in cryptoviewing.com. What are some ways that people can find out more about uh, yeah, your absolutely. Uh, work? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, just Googling me, um, you know, a bunch of hits come up. Um, but <clears throat> most of my work, I, I categorize my work uh through sixcentsmedia.net and there's links to my youtube channel 
to my podcast, the secret podcast is there. Um, you know, you can find me on SoundCloud, on YouTube, um, and on, uh, right now I'm on Spotify as well. Uh, and, and other streaming platforms. Those are the big ones. Um, you can find my books on Amazon, but there's links to my work as well through six sensemedia.net. And then, uh, you know, got to plug crypto viewing, patreon.com slash crypto viewing, where, uh, we just do incredible work every week looking at not just, um, not just cryptocurrencies, but really the impact on society and kind of where things are going. It's really fascinating to see, mm -hmm. uh, especially when we work in the woo-woo stuff once in a while too. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Yeah, I have listened to one of your podcasts that it was an interview with uh, a relative of someone that was involved in the Roswell crash. Uh, Phil, Cor Phil Corso about. Jr. Uh, it was Colonel Corso's son. Colonel yeah. Corso is the one that recovered the, uh, you know, the, Ros the Roswell materials and evidence. So I, I got to speak to his son. That was a really cool interview. It was a great interview. It was a great uh, podcast episode. So thank you. This is definitely worth checking out. Appreciate it. Sure. Well, thanks again for all your work with this project. And I look forward to working with you on some additional Hellfire targets. We have yeah. uh, Anita is doing some tasking for us. So we'll be diving into that. I saw that. I hope to get to that this week. New one's out. So. Further down the rabbit hole we go. Let's see where she sends us next, right? Absolutely. Great. All right. We'll talk All right, to you Darby. Soon. Thanks so much. Take care, buddy.